Hello everybody and welcome back to Rebel Clan. We are in year 5, but it's not time for the year 5 video yet. Firstly, we have an animatic that takes place over the first three-ish moons of the year and goes over some pretty important stuff that happened. Some of it I rolled for, but others were actually events that happened in the game. Let's just say that Rebel Clan is starting to have some drama and they're starting that out with a bang. Content warning for canon typical violence throughout the animatic, but without further ado, let's get started. In the Rubble Clan camp, Sky Moss is organizing herbs when the sound of a cat calling for her catches her attention. She follows the sound to the entrance of camp and finds her clanmates leading an injured elderly cat. Sky Moss feels her heart stop at the sight of the cat. It's been many moons, but she recognizes them. Their name is Creek, a cat from the group of rogues she used to be a part of. She's shaken out of her stupor by her daughter, Hickory Moth, asking if something is wrong. Sky Moss thinks about telling the truth, but she can tell that Creek is genuinely hurt. She knows how cruel their old group is, especially with older cats who they think aren't pulling their weight. Maybe Creek was chased out of the group like she was. Pushing aside her worries, Sky Moss tells her daughter that she's fine and urges her clanmates to lead Creek to the medicine den. Hickory Moth doesn't look convinced, but she doesn't push her mother any further. However, a suspicious swallow mallow glares at his ex-mate from afar. He was no fool. He easily saw the recognition in her eyes. Once inside the healer's den, Sky Moss urges her clanmates to leave so she can care for her patient and asks the other healers to go out in search of herbs. Once they're alone, Sky Moss turns to her new patient and demands to know what Creek is doing there. Creek looks up, her eyes filled with sadness. She tells Sky Moss that she failed too many hunts and the new leader, Cobble, chased her out of the group. She says she didn't mean to intrude on Rebel Clan territory, but she was too exhausted and couldn't keep going, and that's when the patrol found her. She tells Sky Moss that she's sorry their group forced her to leave when she was expecting kits, but she's glad that Sky Moss found a safe home where she and her family could grow. She promises that as soon as she's better, she'll leave. She doesn't want to constantly remind Sky Moss of her terrible past. At those words, Sky Moss softens. She tells Creek that the past is the past, and she would never force Creek to leave. If she wants to stay, Rebel Clan would be happy to have her. She cleans and dresses the older cat's wounds, sets a few herbs by Creek's nest, and tells her to rest. She'll bring her prey to eat before the herbs. Creek smiles and thanks her for her kindness. However, as Sky Moss turns and leaves the den, her expression turns into a sly, gleeful smirk. She has successfully infiltrated Rubble Clan. As Sky Moss walks to the fresh kill pile, she's stopped by Swallow Mallow, who says that he saw that look on her face. How does she know that cat? Does it have anything to do with the rogue attacks? Sky Moss glares at him and tells him that yes, she knows Creek, but that's all he needs to know. They're not even mates anymore, so he needs to stay out of her business. Swallow Mallow snarls back that it is his business. He's still her deputy, even if they're not mates anymore. Well, the healer yowls, maybe if you were as dedicated to our relationship as you were to your position, things would be different. At this point, their whispers have turned to yowls loud enough for the entire camp to hear. Many cats are looking away, doing their best to pretend they aren't listening. Embarrassed and angry at losing her temper so quickly, Sky Moss grabs a piece of prey and stomps over to the healer's den. Swallow Mallow snarls and storms out of camp. Unnoticed by both of them, Posyback is sitting above on the rocks. She heard all of it, including Creek and Sky Moss's conversation. And as the clan mutters, she thinks, and a plan begins to form in her mind. A few days later, when the healers are all asleep, Posyback sneaks into the healer's den and nudges Creek awake. She tells the older cat that she knows Creek is from the group of rogues attacking Rebel Clan. Despite being injured, Creek sends a sharp glare up to the young cat, unsheaths her claws, and asks what Posyback is going to do about it. Posyback looks unfazed by the threat, as she tells Creek she's not going to do anything. She just wants Creek to lead her to the rogue group's leader. She has a way for both of them to get what they want. Some days pass, and when Creek is well enough to walk, Posyback asks Sky Moss if she can take Creek out of camp to let the old cat stretch her legs. Sky Moss is surprised by Posyback's unusually kind offer but agrees, suggesting a few places that would be easy for Creek to get to. They nod, but disregard her suggestions. They already know where they're going. Swallow Mallow watches the two cats leave camp, his eyes narrowed with suspicion. He knows they're up to something. He waits until Sky Moss has returned to her den and then leaves camp, following their tracks and their scent until he discovers them waiting near one of the many rivers on the mountain. Creek tells Posyback that this is the meeting place. They just have to wait for Cobble to appear. After what feels like an eternity, a young cat appears on the other side of the river. She sends a glare towards Posyback and asks why a clan cat is at their meeting spot. Posyback steps forward and introduces herself. She says that she's here to give them both what they want. Cobble seems suspicious of Posyback still, but sits down and says she's willing to hear her out. 
Swallow Mallow listens on in terror as Posyback explains that she can help set up a trap, giving them a chance when the clan camp will be at its weakest and least defended. She won't try to stop them, she won't warn anybody, she'll even let them take over some of their territory. All she asks is that they give her a chance to kill a specific cat, a cat named Thrushfur. Cobble looks surprised, but unconvinced. She tells the two cats to go back to camp. She will discuss with the rest of their group, and they'll meet in the same spot a few days from now with an answer for Posyback. Posyback and Creek leave, and Cobble turns and darts through the shrubbery. Swallow Mallow thinks about going back to camp, but he can't when the rogues are so close. If he can find their camp location, they can chase them out before anything bad happens. He rushes after Cobble, following her tracks until he starts to catch up with her. Swallow Mallow, so desperate after so many deaths and rogue attacks, forgets to be careful, and doesn't notice that Cobble has realized she's being followed. At the end of Rebel Clan's mountains, Cobble runs straight through a line of bushes. Certain the camp must be close, Swallow Mallow carelessly darts through the bushes, and then slams against metal. As he regains his bearings, he realizes he just ran straight into a two-leg trap. Swallow Mallow panics. No, this can't happen now! He needs to show his clan what he saw! But it's too late. The two legs who set up the trap heard it slam shut. They pick him up, taking him towards the waiting monster. The deputy yowls as loud as he can, hoping with all his heart that his clanmates will hear him and come to his rescue. But the only cat that shows up is Cobble, who sits at the edge of the tree line and watches with a smile as he's taken away. The next few days in Rebel Clan are panicked ones. Their deputy has vanished, and no one knows where he could have gone. The rogue attacks are still happening, and now they seem even more coordinated, as if the cats know the territory as well as any Rebel Clan cat. Then, only a few moons later, the day finally comes. The silence of the Rebel Clan camp is broken as a badly injured Yeropaw runs into camp, yowling a warning, seconds before a group of rogues burst into the camp. The clan devolves into chaos as cats desperately fight for their lives. Timberquill fights ferociously, defending the healer's den and her mate Piperwood with all the skills she knows. Blue Ears and Serpent Heart send a rogue running, but then Blue Ears screeches to a halt at the sight of her child, Fidget Paw, lying dead. With a furious yowl, the duo charge at the cat who killed Fidget Paw, and Blue Ears pins them to the ground. There's no regret in the cat's eyes, and so Blue Ears shows them no mercy in return. A terrified River Mallow is cornered by a rogue who seems to enjoy toying with the panicked cat. But before the rogue can attack, Marsh Kick rushes forward and chases him off. The rogue scrambles and runs away while Marsh Kick turns and tells River Mallow to get to safety before he turns and rushes back into the fight. River Mallow glares jealously at Marsh Kick, his claws digging into the earth, but he listens, running away from the fight without looking back. Juniper Paw is badly injured but ignores the pain. She injures one of the rogues and turns to find a new target. It is then that she witnesses one of the rogues charge at her sister, Fall Paw, and deliver a killing blow. With a yowl of rage, Juniper Paw charges forward and launches herself at the cat. With vengeance driving her forward, she kills the rogue without a second thought and then rushes away to find another fight. The entrance to the Elder's Den is fiercely protected by Dovetail and Sharkstorm. They try to simply chase the rogues off, but one of the more vicious cats spots an opening and deals a deadly hit to Dovetail. Several of the rogues rush to attack the nursery as the caretakers try desperately to push them back. Carnation Kit, Heart Kit, and Echo Kit can do nothing but watch as their father, New Chest, defends them from the rogues. However, the violent cats overwhelm him and Carnation Kit yowls with grief as their father takes a deadly blow. A badly injured Whiskerfrond stands protectively in front of his apprentice, Ramblepaw. As the rogues close in, Whiskerfrond yowls at his apprentice to run now! The young cat throws himself up the rocks of Rebel Clan's camp, nearly slipping, until Whiskerfrond uses the last of his strength to shove Ramblepaw to safety. Tears blurring Ramblepaw's vision, he escapes, all thanks to his mentor's sacrifice. Guppy knocks down a rogue, but hesitates to truly injure the cat. The rogue looks young, young enough to be an apprentice, and seems to be frightened, so instead he tells the cat to leave while they have the chance. The cat doesn't have to be told twice, they turn tail and run away. Without an opponent distracting him, Guppy's own fears reappear. His eyes frantically scan the chaos to try and find his mate, Thrushfur. He doesn't spot him, but he does notice Posyback slipping towards the cliff sides of their camp. There's a feeling in his gut that tells him something bad is about to happen, and he rushes after the cat as fast as he can. Badly injured, Thrushfur finds himself chased away from the rest of his clanmates, cornered on the edges of a cliff. He's prepared to fight when the rogue suddenly turns and yowls, saying that they've found him. To Thrushfur's horror, Posyback stalks out, a vicious smile on her face. Thrushfur isn't a fool. He knows what's about to happen. He rushes forward to try and get away, but Posyback knocks him down and pins him to the ground. 
Posyback's expression is filled with glee as she digs her claws into his fur. She tells Thrushfur that she's waited moons for this moment, and tells him not to worry. She'll take good care of Guppy. And then she slices her claws across his throat. As the wound begins to bleed, a shocked cry makes Posyback look towards the camp, and she sees a horrified Guppy staring at her. Shocked at being caught, Posyback hesitates for long enough that Thrushfur manages to sink his teeth into her paw. As she yowls in pain, Guppy rushes forward, using all of his strength to shove Posyback off of Thrushfur. Posyback, in her frozen state, was unprepared for the attack and is sent tumbling back. She desperately tries to hold on to the rock, but her claws fail to catch anything. The last thing she sees is Guppy's angry, tearful expression before she loses her grip and falls to her death. The battle finally comes to an end when Bramble Eagle and Marshkick manage to find Cobble in the chaos. Distracted by Marshkick's attacks, she doesn't see Bramble Eagle until it's too late and is taken down with a killing blow. One of the rogues, Dusty, realizes that the tide is quickly turning, and Cobble's death is a sure sign that they won't win. She yowls for her remaining rogues to retreat, and they scramble out of the camp as fast as they can. In the aftermath, clanmates both young and old lie dead, and the surviving cats are shaken by the attack. A few days pass by, but the rogues don't return. Despite that, Sky Moss can't help but feel like something is wrong. The feeling continues to persist until one day she catches Creek sneaking out of camp after dark. She doesn't want to be suspicious, but the feeling is even stronger now. She follows after Creek and finds the cat meeting with one of the rogues at the river. Sky Moss is shocked and feels foolish for ever believing the cat's sob story. Between the camp and the river, she lets her presence be known and snarls at Creek, demanding to know why she's betraying the clan. Creek smirks, as if she doesn't care that she's been caught. She asks Sky Moss if it's really a betrayal if she was never part of the clan. She never cared about any of the rebel clan cats. It was a setup from the very beginning. Sky Moss is furious, not just at Creek, but at herself. She snarls and declares that she'll tell the entire clan the truth. The older cat tells her to go ahead. Even if Creek is kicked out, she'll just go back to the rogue group and tell them everything she's learned. Every weakness, every hiding spot, every vulnerable cat. She chuckles and asks if Sky Moss really believes her clan is ready for another attack so soon. Sky Moss feels a thrum of fear in her heart, but anger overpowers her as she snarls that the older cat is bluffing. Maybe, Creek says, unbothered. But are you really willing to take the chance with all you have to lose? After all, Sky Moss knows that their group won't show mercy against her or... Oh, what were their names again? Piperwood and Hickory Moth? Sky Moss feels her rage reach a boiling point. Nobody threatens her daughters. With a yowl, she charges forward and tries to shove Creek off the cliff behind them. However, unlike Posyback, Creek was ready for this. As they collide, Creek digs her claws into the healer's fur and doesn't let go. With a vicious grin, Creek declares that if she goes down, Sky Moss is coming with her. Sky Moss feels her paws leave the safety of the cliffside. The wind howls in her ears, and Sky Moss and Creek fall to their deaths. The knowledge of Creek's betrayal died with Sky Moss. Instead, Rubble Clan finds two cats they saw as clanmates dead by the Miss Clan border. Furious and enraged by what is believed to be an attack from the cruel leader, Jagged Star, war is declared on Miss Clan, and Rebel Clan falls further into turmoil. So, yeah, that was a lot. And I thought Hound Clan had drama. But this is where the video ends for now. We'll talk about the cats in Star Clan, the war, and the drama more in the Year 5 video, which should be out this Friday, hopefully. The family tree should be updated that day as well. Thank you all so much for watching. This animatic was a lot of work to make and I'm really proud with how it came out, so I hope you enjoyed it and all the drama it brought with it. Remember to take care of yourselves, watch out for rogue attacks, and I'll see you on Friday, hopefully, for Year 5!